Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of my vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a singer-songwriter based out of Maple Ridge, BC. I've been doing this vlog for a couple of months about my fun travels around the province of BC. And one of the things I like to do is check out local historic sites and uh, places that shaped the history of our province. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the history of where I live. This place wasn't always called Maple Ridge. The land that I'm, well, currently standing on in this house, I'm off of uh, 228th in Maple Ridge. Uh, this town was originally called Haney. A lot of people here in town still refer to it as Haney. Uh, shout out to the Facebook page. We call it Haney, which is all about um, what life was once like uh, here in the town we call home. Uh, the town historically referred to as Haney, or Port Haney, uh, named after Thomas Haney, the founder of the town, who uh, built, or rather, purchased land in, I believe, I want to say, 1879. Uh, he came to Maple Ridge off the uh, CPR, and he found the land because it was uh, perfect for brick making, and uh, that was his profession. He uh, owned a brickworks company. And uh, in 1883, he, well, it was built for him. He didn't build it by hand, I wouldn't imagine. But uh, his residence was built on what is now 224th Street. And his original home is still there. So we're going to check that out. We're going to check out the local Maple Ridge Museum as well, which has a lot of cool artifacts uh, from this town's history and from Haney's history. And we're going to go and check out some vintage buildings that are still around from the uh, from what some might call the glory days of old Haney. Um, so I, I like what this town has done to preserve some of our historic buildings and historic places. So let's go. I'm going to hop in my trusty automobile, drive around town, and tell you guys some fun facts about the history of the place we call home. Here at the bottom of 224th Street in Maple Ridge is this somewhat unassuming little house. It's been here for 136 years and inside they've dedicated it as a museum. It's only open once a week, only on Sundays. It's a museum to how life once was here in Maple Ridge. And here's the beautiful front entrance. So, until I believe it was the 60s or 70s, this part of town, basically everything east of 216th, was referred to as the town of Haney. It was named after Thomas Haney, who lived in this very house. So this house was restored a good 40 years ago in 1979. And it's rem remained a museum to this day. Alright, so there was no video photography allowed in the Haney house, but I was able to take a ton of pictures, and I started here in the kitchen. They were telling me that this was the most updated room in the house, as it was lived in until 1979. There you can see those cabinets are fairly updated. Um, and that's where the uh, furnace uh, would have gone through. They put a little picture there uh, to cover the hole. Now one really cool thing about this kitchen is all the little utensils and actually every little thing in this house is original, was owned by the Haney family. They didn't bring anything in to sort of add to the vintage charm. It's all original. And this is a butter press uh, and that would have been Mrs. Haney's personal seal. So it would have been either made by her or at least for her and she would have pressed her own little logo uh, into any butter that she would have made. And it would have taken her three or four hours to churn the butter as well. Here's the entertainment room. Got your piano there. Um, and you got some, uh, you got a bookshelf and an old school typewriter. And uh, what I really liked about this room is all the family portraits that hang up on the wall. So much history in those. And there you got uh, the bookshelf. Now those books at the bottom were vintage British Columbia almanacs. Would have been so cool to be able to read those, but of course there's no touching in here. And um, yeah, there's some tobacco filters and 
an antique spinning wheel as well, as well as some vintage chairs. And even the chandelier is cool. Even that dates back to, I think they said the 20s or 30s. And this silverware, I would imagine this silverware would be worth a lot of money nowadays. Uh, they were telling me that someone had just come in and really wanted to buy it. But nope, just in case you're wondering, they're not selling. Now, this is different generations of wallpaper that they found under what was the current wallpaper when they renovated the building. The interesting thing about that is it was made from newspapers, so you can actually date them. They showed me a close-up of one of them, which showed that it was made out of a newspaper from 1908. Real shot of the bathroom there. Everything, even this carpet, is original and owned by the Haney family. Now, this is cool. This was a warming cabinet that went through uh, the furnace column. You could put uh, your clothing in there, and it would stay warm. And it was also a fire hazard. You can see some char marks there. And there's... A really cool shot of what would have been all of Thomas Haney's land that would have become the original settlement of the town of Haney. I guess it's not all land he would have owned, but uh, that's the original map of the settlement of Haney. And this is a war rosary that was given to Mrs. Haney that was found in a bombed-out church in France. World War One. that's amazing. And this painting is particularly incredible. Take a look at that church. That church is actually still there. I want to say it's on Callahan Avenue now. I know it's been moved a couple of times, I think, over the years. But that church you can still find. Didn't have time to go see it on this trip, though. Vintage telephone. This is from probably the 1920s. So by the time this telephone was put in, this house was already a good 40 years old. There's some Native American art, which may not actually be made by Native Americans. It was probably just sold to the Haney family, but still cool to see nonetheless. Now, this room definitely spooked me. This is Thomas Haney's daughter's room, and she actually developed tuberculosis, and this room wound up being quarantined for quite a while. And uh, by the time the museum got... A hold of this house in 1979, that room was still boarded up, and they restored it to its former glory and reopened it so people could see into it. This is a portrait, a death portrait, actually, in fact, of his daughter after she had passed. Apparently, they, took, they would have taken a photo of the body and sent it off to someone in Vancouver who drew this beautiful portrait, which has hung in the living room ever since. And finally, they have a really cool old Haney family tree. Now check this out. These pictures are really cool. You can see how the house would have originally looked back in the 1880s. That's the oldest picture of this house known to exist. Here's what it looked like by the time the Haney's, or the Haney descendants, moved out and they sold the house to the museum. And here's how beautiful it looks now that they've restored the exterior of the house to its original glory. Very, very cool. So they were telling me that out on this porch, Thomas Haney's daughter, I forget her name right now, would sit on there because they said that the best cure for tuberculosis was fresh air. Now, of course, that wasn't, that wasn't true. That was just their assumption back in the day. She actually wound up passing away on that porch looking out she had a good view of the the Fraser River so she could see all that was going on in the river all right I'm now here at 216th Street but this wasn't always called 216th Street it used to be Town Line Road and the reason it was called that is that everything on that side of the street was known as Maple Ridge and everything on this side of the street was Haney it used to be two separate communities in the 30s they redid their street naming just because in order to make more sense they decided to go with a numbered street system so this became Fifth Avenue until 1963 that is at which point they merged the street naming system with that of all of Greater Vancouver and this became 216th Street but apparently this grocery store never got the memo
So I don't know anything about the history of this grocery store, but I'm just assuming by the name that perhaps it has been here since before 1963 and decided to hang on to that Fifth Avenue grocery 57 years after this street was ever under that name. I just think that's a fascinating little throwback that we have Fifth Avenue grocery here on what is now 216th. Like I said earlier, Maple Ridge is a CPR town located on the Trans-Canada route of the Canadian Pacific Railway. And as a result, I am standing pretty much right where the town was founded, where people would have first stopped here at Port Haney back in the 1870s. Back in the day, this block here of what is now River Road was the downtown core of Maple Ridge. And this building here, the Billy Minor Ale House, is one of the last classic buildings in this area. It was built in the 1910s, and it was the original Bank of Montreal here, serving the people of Maple Ridge. And this is the first bank that was ever built in Maple Ridge, and it is believed to be the oldest commercial building still standing. It was used as the Bank of Montreal from 1910 through 1933, after which point it was moved to a brick building on 224th, which is actually still the BMO in town. One thing that is cool about the Port Haney station area is that it still serves passenger rail to this very day. That is now the West Coast Express Port Haney station. They've kept the Port Haney name and the West Coast Express has run service from Mission City to downtown Vancouver since 1995. I'm here on the wharf here in Port Haney to check out this equally cool building. This was a real estate office that was originally located on 224th Street back in 1926. It was a post, it was a, sorry, it was a real estate office for a while, then eventually it became a bus shelter. It's a very small little building, so it just sat on a bus stop for a while. But then, in 1950, the land was purchased by the post office, and this building was no longer of use. And again, just like the hill house that I was talking about earlier. It, instead of demolishing this little building, it was just moved here on the back of a truck and it became the wharf office. It doesn't serve any purpose anymore other than to be a stop on the Maple Ridge Heritage Walk and to be a reminder of this town's rich history. Some really cool vintage photographs of this area. I'll put in the window here. That's really cool. Musala Motors was the original car dealership in town. That would have been a really cool stop to make on this trip. But just last year, maybe the year before, the original Musala Motors building on Lougheed burned to the ground. There's the original Port Haney Station. Building no longer exists, but there's still a train station there. You can't really talk about the town of Haney without talking about the Haney. This is a motel that was opened way back in the 1940s. I believe the liquor store side of the building is, a, uh, is an extension that was built later, but for decades and decades, people have been coming to this pub and hotel. All right, so now I'm here in Wanak, uh, in the center of town, that back in the 1910s and 1920s was referred to as the front. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know why it used to be called the front, but uh, 
So there used to be a lot of uh, commercial businesses operating here back in the 1910s and the 1920s. Most of them are gone now, except for this incredible remnant. The Wanak General Store, which is now called the Wanak Red and White Store. I also really like those vintage soda advertisements from back in the day. This building was built, no one's really sure exactly when, approximately 1919 or 1920. And uh, so for about a hundred years, it's been continually operating. And in 2004, it was actually added to the Canadian Register of Historic Places. You also have this vintage post office on site that is the original Canada Post Wanak Post Office. And as you can tell, there's still a lot of business going on here still a popular stop for people passing through i just always imagine that the people who are long gone who used to spend their life working and shopping at this very store so i'm not gonna lie i'm cheating a little bit for this next one because technically i'm now in mission but uh this is one of my favorite old school things just on the side of the road here in uh, Mission just past Silverdale here. So when I was uh, on tour in May, I took 10 ferries and I was telling you guys about a little bit about the history of BC ferries and their various vessels. And one of the most important parts of that history is right behind me. There's private property everywhere here and it's hard to get any closer, but that is the Queen of Sydney. The Queen of Sydney was the very first ship that BC Ferries ever built and began operating in 1960 alongside its sister ship, the Queen of Tawasson. So it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but this boat still has its old school 1990s paint job in fact, I think it's an 80s paint job. In 2003, BC Ferries updated their look to their current design. But this ship was actually scrapped in 1999. And uh, instead of being sold maybe for scrap or for parts for, for to another company, it was just sold to this uh, kind of eclectic collector here in Mission. Who had it just towed here, I think. I, I don't know. Maybe it got here under its own power. But to my knowledge, for the last 20 years, it has just been sitting here rotting away. At least since I was a kid, this has always been here. It's a common sight that is used for filming TV shows and movies. Uh, I know a couple of years ago they filmed a crazy explosion scene here. That actually concerned some locals because they were just wandering by and they just saw this boat explode. But uh, it was all planned for a movie. Also, I believe they do laser tag. I don't know if it's still safe to be on the decks of this ship or if they've been corroding away over time. I know there's also a Washington State Ferry pressed up against it. Like an ancient Washington State Ferry from like turn of the last century. I don't know if you can see it at all from this angle. But it's pretty rotten away. And I know that on the car decks to this old Queen of Sydney, they've actually rolled some historic cars there. Now, I'm not going to get onto the property that it's located on uh, just because I don't want to be guilty of trespassing. This is about as close as I can get while still on public property. Just to me, this is a part of BC culture. How many people took the, sh the trip from Victoria to Tawasson on this for the nearly 40 years that this boat was in service. And then another how many people have driven by it since. So cool. All right, thanks so much for watching. That's gonna do it for this uh, trek through the history of our town. Um, I think in the future I might do a video on Maple Ridge proper, i.e. everything west of what is now 216th Street, Old Town Line Road, and uh, the Hammond area and all the historic stuff that's on that side of town. That'll come through someday, but I had such a fun time 
uh, going by and checking out some of the historic sites uh, in our town. For those of you who don't know, I'm also a professional, uh, a touring professional musician. Uh, you can check out a full list of my tour dates that I have planned in the description with more to be announced, always more to be announced. Um, and uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying these videos and ring that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, which will be tomorrow and every day for the foreseeable future, uh, hopefully. And uh, yeah, like this video if you like what you saw. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully some of you are checking out this channel for the first time. Uh, really hope you enjoyed it. I plan on doing more historical adventures in the future. Uh, I'll, I'll put links in, in the description to some previous history videos I've done uh, in places like uh, Powell River I checked out. Uh, some cool historic sites in downtown Powell River there. Um, as well as some cool historic stuff in Seattle. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you again with a new vlog episode tomorrow. Thank you.